Hello, this is Veronica Hicks with a series of descriptive insights into the upcoming coronation. To give blind and partially sighted listeners as many visual details of the event before it happens. Every day a new detail is announced. Some are expected, some are a surprise. For the next few minutes I'm going to talk about four definite images that will define this coronation. The first is the official coronation emblem that we will be seeing more and more of over the next few days as shop windows and private houses unveil their own coronation window displays. Celebrated designer Sir Johnny Ive, KBE, formerly a designer at Apple, has created a circular coronation emblem in red, white and blue. Think of it as a plate, a white plate, with words in blue capital letters around the rim. Across the top, King Charles III, on the lower half going from left to right the word coronation, followed by the 6th of May 2023, and each of these elements is separated by a dot. In the centre of the plate, a cheerful circular floral design reflecting the King's love of the natural world, incorporating the flora of the four nations of the United Kingdom, the Rose of England, the Thistle of Scotland, the Daffodil of Wales and the Shamrock of Northern Ireland. The flowers are drawn in a similarly loose and unfussy style, like the flowers on the coronation invitation. They're mostly red, but in their centre where they come together to form the shape of St Edward the Confessor's crown, they're blue. Speaking about the emblem, the designer said the design was inspired by King Charles's love of the planet, nature, and his deep concern for the natural world. The emblem speaks to the happy optimism of spring and celebrates the beginning of this new Carolean era for the United Kingdom. The gentle modesty of these natural forms combine to define an emblem that acknowledges both the joyful and the traditional. It is available in English and Welsh and will be used throughout the celebrations, at street parties, on flags, even in the service itself. And it will feature heavily on all the official merchandise commemorating the historic event, like on mugs, plates, balloons, aprons, stickers, tea towels, tablecloths and even hats. Another first for this coronation, the first in the age of social media, is the coronation emoji, which was unveiled last month. The colourful cartoon motif depicts the 17th century jewelled solid gold crown of St Edward with the purple velvet cap and the plan is that this emoji pops up whenever the coronation is discussed on social media. Which leads me directly to take a look at the real thing, actually at the two crowns of significance that are the centrepieces of the coronation ceremony. The first being the crown of St Edward the Confessor, who was the last Anglo-Saxon King of England crowned in 1042. The original crown and the 11th century Westminster Abbey were destroyed long ago, but then replaced. Some version of that medieval crown has been the centrepiece of every coronation since then. We know when Oliver Cromwell declared England a republic in 1649, effectively abolishing the monarchy and the king in a most head-rolling way, the crown was melted down for its metal. Current crown of that name crowned the new king on the 6th of May dates back to 1661, made especially for King Charles II on his restoration to the throne. It's thought that fragments and shards of the melted-down crown are incorporated in this one. The crown is made up of a solid gold frame, set with rubies, amethysts, sapphires, garnet, topaz and terminines. In the centre, the crown has a rich purple velvet cap with an ermine band below it, white fur with small black markings, which symbolises purity. Rising up from the gold frame, the crown has four crosses pâté. That is the term for crosses that date back to medieval times that are quite squat in shape, the four arms identical in size and narrowing at the centre. Then there are four golden fleur-de-lis, the three-petalled lily emblem, embellished with precious stones, and the crown is protected by two golden arches surmounted by a gem-encrusted cross pâté. It weighs 2.23 kilos, which is about 5 pounds, but fortunately it's only worn for a few moments during the ceremony when the Archbishop of Canterbury places it briefly on the new monarch's head. Thereafter, King Charles III exchanges that crown for the more familiar and spectacular imperial state crown, which the world last saw placed on the late Queen's coffin at her state funeral. The imperial state crown was made for the unexpected coronation of King George VI 
the late Queen's father, in 1937, but is closely based on a crown designed for Queen Victoria a hundred years earlier. The crown is 12.4 inches tall, that's 31.5 centimetres, and it weighs 1.06 kilos, or 2.3 pounds. That is half the weight of the older crown. The openwork gold frame is mounted with three very large stones and set with 2,868 diamonds in silver mounts and coloured stones in gold mounts, including 17 blue sapphires, 11 emeralds and 269 pearls. The effect is absolutely dazzling. At the front of the crown band is the large cushion-shaped brilliant Kalinan II at 317.4 carats it's the second largest stone cut from the Cullinan diamond, which is also known as the second star of Africa. The Cullinan diamond was found in 1905, 20 miles from Pretoria, and it weighed 3,025 pounds. It was offered to Edward VII in 1907 as a gift following the Boer War. At the back of the headband is a large oval sapphire, 104 carats, known as the Stuart Sapphire. It is traditionally thought to have been smuggled by James II when he fled England in December 1688 and thereafter had a very dramatic history before it eventually ended up where it is today. The sapphire and the diamond, front and back, are linked by an open-work frieze containing eight emeralds and eight sapphires between two rows of tiny pearls. Above the band are four half-arches, each sprung from a cross pâté. The arches are cast as oak leaves set with diamonds, each having pearl acorns in diamond cups projecting from the sides. The arches can be raised or lowered according to the wishes of the monarch, and George VI opted for high arches, whereas his daughter lowered them by several inches. The arches on the crown are there to demonstrate that England was not subject to any other earthly power. The front cross that stands in front of the purple cap is mounted with a large irregular red spinel known as the Black Prince's Ruby, traditionally thought to have been the ruby given to Edward, Prince of Wales, son of Edward III, and known as the Black Prince by Don Pedro, King of Castile. This stone measures 170 carats and is of eastern origin and has been drilled in the past to be used as a pendant. It is said that it was worn by Henry V in his helmet at the Battle of Agincourt. Whether this is true or not, we do not know, but it adds glamour to the stone. The remaining three crosses are each mounted with a step-cut emerald mounted as a lozenge. The crosses alternate with the four fleur-de-lis, each with a mixed-cut ruby in the centre, and the crosses and the fleur-de-lis are mounted with diamonds, linked by swags of diamonds supported on sapphires. The cross that stands at the front of the purple cap is mounted by a large irregular red spinel known as the Black Prince's Ruby. This was thought to have been the ruby given to Edward, Prince of Wales, son of Edward III, and known as the Black Prince. It is eastern in origin and measures 170 carats and has been drilled in the past for use as a pendant. It had a very checkered and exciting history, but it is said that it was one of the stones worn by Henry V in his helmet at the Battle of Agincourt. Whether that is true or not, it's a romantic story. The three remaining crosses are mounted with emeralds in a lozenge shape. Above the arches in the centre stands a mond or an orb of fretted silver with shards of diamonds. It has a cross pâté above it, which looks like a very thin square of diamonds. In its centre is an octagonal rose-coloured sapphire known as the St Edward's Sapphire. The story behind this sapphire is that Edward the Confessor, the last Anglo-Saxon king, was asked for alms by a beggar. Because he carried no money with him, the king presented the beggar with a ring. The beggar later turned out to be St. John the Evangelist, who assisted two English pilgrims in Syria in gratitude for the king's help and asked them to return the ring to St. Edward. The king was buried with the ring in Westminster Abbey in 1066. In the 12th century, the tomb was opened and the ring was removed and eventually ended up on this crown. The crown has the central purple velvet cap and an ermine band around the head. Her Majesty the Queen famously said that one had to keep one's head very still, 
otherwise one could do one's neck a lot of damage. Such was the weight and the size of the crown. For a description of other royal regalia and the robes worn by their majesties, just click on the link on Countdown to the Coronation. With me, Veronica Hicks.